In just five days, Didi Chuxing, known as China's Uber and largest ride-hailing company, has already gone through many ups and downs. On June 30th, Didi went public on the New York Stock Exchange under the ticker symbol Didi, with an opening price of $16.82 per share, up 20% from the $14 per share offering price. The market valuation reached $68.49 billion USD. Making it the largest Chinese IPO since Alibaba Group went public in 2014 and reached 25 billion USD. But investor interest dropped within a day, and Didi closed at $14.14 on the same day. On July 1st, Didi opened at $15.9 and closed at $16.4, up 15.98% from yesterday's closing price. On the third day of the IPO, the Office of Network Security. A subsidiary of the Cyberspace Administration of China issued a letter on July 2nd, saying that it would conduct a network security review of Didi and stop new user registration during the period. Following the announcement of the investigation, Didi dropped 10% before the next stop opening and closed at $15.53 per share on the third, down 5.3%. On July 3rd, it was reported on the Chinese internet that in order to be listed overseas. Didi gave user data and road data to the U.S. Li Min, vice president of Didi, said that, like many Chinese companies listed overseas, Didi's domestic user data is stored on domestic servers, and it is absolutely impossible to hand over this data to the U.S. At the same time, Didi responded to the CCP's investigation by saying that it would actively cooperate with the Office of Network Security. On July 4th, China's State Network Information Office. Issued a notice stating that the Didi app has been illegally collecting and using personal information. In accordance with the People's Republic of China Internet Security Law, the office notified application stores to take down the Didi app. In response to this, Didi staff has said the company is determined to implement the relevant requirements of the State Department and has suspended new user registration on July 3rd. The app will be taken down and corrected in strict accordance with the requirements. Users who have downloaded the app can still use it normally for the time being. This happened only five days after Didi's IPO. Why did China's regulators choose to take action against Didi right after it went public in the U.S.? According to sources, Didi has ignored repeated communications from the Chinese regulatory authorities and rushed to the U.S., hoping to make a preemptive move by deliberately choosing to go to the U.S. before the CCP's centennial celebration. Which infuriated Beijing authorities. Therefore, the punishment for Didi will be much stronger than Alibaba Group. On July 5th, Hong Kong's financial media Zhizi Icon, a subsidiary of Hong Kong O1, reported that, according to sources, the reason for the removing of the Didi app was due to the authorities' concern about the risk of data security leaks to the country and Chinese citizens, and also due to the fact that Didi rashly went public in the United States. Despite repeated communications from the regulators, the report said that regulators had repeatedly told Didi not to go public in the U.S., but Didi gave no comments. Since 2018, the regulators have discouraged Chinese companies from listing in the U.S. Not only Didi, but any Chinese online company that possess a lot of data on China, including Alibaba Group, Jindong, C Trip, Meituan, and more. Since most of these companies are involved in various kinds of data collection, Beijing authorities do not want them to list in other markets and guide companies that are already listed in the U.S. or thinking of listing in the U.S. to go back home or list in Hong Kong. The report also mentioned that Beijing authorities have paid particular attention to data security in recent years, and there were rumors that Didi is subject to security investigation due to leaking China's road traffic data to the U.S. However. Didi has not provided data to the U.S. in exchange for public listing, and Beijing authorities have been monitoring it closely. But this does not eliminate official concerns about data security. A Chinese regulatory insider said, "Once Didi is successfully listed in the U.S., it will face the regulatory requirements of the U.S., which will definitely put the security of China's national and citizen data at risk. This is extremely dangerous and goes against national security." China's Global Times also published an article saying that the State Network Information Office's notification received widespread public support. 
Didi reportedly has at least 80% of the market share of China's online taxi services, and countless people use it. Didi appears to have the ability to conduct big data analysis of a person's behavior, which of course poses a potential information risk to the individual. In particular, the listing of Didi in the U.S. has also caused concern among the Chinese communist authorities, with its top shareholder, SoftBank Vision Fund entity, holding 21.5%, and its second largest shareholder, Uber, holding 12.8%, both of which are foreign companies. There are also comments that believe an internal struggle between Xi Jinping and Jiang Zemin is behind this incident. Tencent and Alibaba are both shareholders of Didi, and both are considered to be assets of the Jiang family. Didi's shareholding structure is complex and may involve other princelings, the descendants of prominent CCP officials, some of whom could pose a potential threat to Xi Jinping. Therefore, Xi naturally does not want the Jiang faction and these princelings to reap any benefits. This is why Didi did not hold a press conference or make any announcements, but quietly went public in New York during the party's centennial celebration which means they knew someone was watching them. Didi was established in 2012, and after 2014, the online taxi industry boomed, with Didi merging with Express and Uber China to become a giant in the industry. According to mainland media reports, in October 2020, Didi's monthly active users in China exceeded 400 million, and its monthly order volume was 562 million, accounting for 90.58% of China's total online taxi orders. The prospectus also shows that Didi currently has 493 million active users worldwide, covering 15 countries and more than 4,000 cities, with about 15 million active drivers, 41 million daily transactions, and a total transaction volume of 52.79 billion USD. However, Didi is always burning money to subsidize users and drivers in order to maintain user growth and capture the market. Although Didi also takes about 25% of the driver's earnings, their expenditures are always greater than their income, and the company is always in a loss-making situation. The prospectus of Didi's IPO shows that from 2018 to 2020, Didi's annual revenue was 20.47 billion, 22.43 billion, and 20.54 billion USD, respectively. In the first quarter of 2021, Didi's revenue was about 6.44 billion USD. Profit-wise, in the past three years, Didi has been operating at a loss. The perspective shows that Didi will incur operating losses of $1.88 billion in 2018, $1.16 billion in 2019, $2 billion in 2020, and $1.03 billion USD in the first quarter of this year, presumably because Didi accepted an investment for the purpose of going public. It is estimated that in order to go public, Didi received an investment of about 0.85 billion USD in the first quarter of 2021 to turn its losses into a profit. Didi has been able to maintain its operations by relying on external financing. According to statistics, Didi received 18 rounds of financing since its inception, with an accumulated amount of 21 billion USD. It can be said that if it were not for the external help, Didi would have shut down long ago. This also means that it's crucial for Didi to go public as soon as possible.